continuing on with uh, 1.1, and we are going to be uh, going through, we got two examples, and then we're going to try some on our own. Uh, this stuff that I give you today at the end, which is called um, like independent practice, will be your um, homework from now on. Um, I will be giving you one of these books. Um, there should be coming in on Tuesdays what the uh, tracking number says. So Tuesday afternoon, I'll be going down to the book room and grabbing all these if they get here by the end of uh, the work day. If not, then it'll probably be um, Thursday. So hopefully it'll be either Wednesday or Thursday that you will receive one of these books. And then you just can take your notes right in here. Um, and like I said, all you'll need is uh, a notebook to put this in or if you just want to keep this in. I would put it in a notebook because, as I said, these are really chintzy and they will fall apart in your backpack. Pages will fall out. Things will tear. I would put it in something that was like a harder cover to keep it protected. Just like a one-inch binder would be perfect. Um, all right, so someone go ahead, if you would, and please read example two for me. Thank you. A set of four tires is 25% off the regular price when purchased as a set. The sale price for the set, all four tires together, is $249.25. What expression could be used to represent the regular price of the set? Identify each term with the cost of the set, factors, and coefficients of the terms that are two variables. All right. Is this an example that's going to happen in your life? Are you going to have to buy tires? Are you just going to go in there and buy whatever set of tires? Yes. I hope not. I hope that you do call. I hope that you find different prices because, especially like on the set of tires, you can save 50 to 100 bucks pretty easy by just shopping around. Um, again, if you don't, those people will realize that you are not a person who's very detail oriented and don't care too much about your money and they're not going to give you the best price. Uh, they're just going to, you come in there, you want some tires, they're going to give you whatever tires. Um, you've got to research on your own. The internet, as you guys know, is an amazing tool. You can go ahead and you can look at reviews and see if these are good tires. Like there's so much that goes into buying tires. It's not just price, correct? But that's definitely something that I take into consideration when I'm looking at them. But I want to look at the reviews, see if this tire really lasts. Are they going to be safe? Because when I buy tires, safety is probably one of the number one things that I look for. I don't want tires that are going to blow up on me and sit me into a uh, you know, car crash. That sounds stupid. Um, but there are things to take into account. Now, how many, is there anyone in here who's a cashier? Like, oh yeah, Publix, right? Have you ever had a customer who's been checking out and they said, this item was supposed to be BOGO, but it didn't ring up as BOGO? Because they have to, now do they have to go back and get the sign? So they go back, they get the sign. Have you ever had an instance where there was a sign up that wasn't supposed to be up? From previous weeks. And what does the customer still get? Now, if the customer isn't watching are you looking to see if that was supposed to be BOGO? No, I mean like it, when you're scanning. When you're scanning the items, are you looking to see that things are BOGO? Or do you not even care? And so if it didn't come up BOGO, you would sell the customer? Oh, you're nice. Most people would not. Most people that are cashiers, huh? Well, you're very nice. Most people will go like this. They're going, dink, 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 and they're not even looking up at the cost or anything like that. Because I will tell you, there's been multiple times that I've found something that was supposed to speak BOGO, and it doesn't come up, and the cashier never said anything to me. Because do they really care? It's, you're, you're just another, I've like, got one more hour. One more hour. 59 minutes. 59, like that's, that's what's going through their mind, right? Okay, so that, that goes for every kind of thing that you're going to be purchasing, guys. So how do you, like if you were going to buy these tires, how many of you would actually calculate how much these tires should be before going up to the register? I would. Maybe. I would 100% calculate the cost because I don't trust them. 
they're liars. And so I go up there to liars who are some liars. Yeah. Didn't know I was all about that. So I would go up there and I would make sure before I even go up there, I would know what the price should be. Because that has saved me, I would say in my lifetime, I probably saved probably thousands of dollars by doing that kind of stuff. It's probably added up now. I'm 32. It's kind of a lot of years of buying stuff that I've had to check and make sure. And, and people do things wrong all the time. So how do we do this? How do we calculate how much this is going to be? Anyone have any idea what you would do? I don't mind awkward silence. No one knows how to calculate this. Alex, you got no idea. Man, I could rip you guys off all day long. Okay. Take the total price of that four tire sale. The total price? Yeah. And then okay. increase by 25%. So, you have to figure out what's that 25%. Okay, how do you figure that out? No idea. Okay. So, we'll put these two together. You said you would take the 249, which is the cost of the tires, right? 249, 95, and you would subtract, well, he said subtract the 25% off. And you said to calculate the 25% off, you would say the 0 0.25 times 249.95. Does everybody understand? What does this calculate right here? How much you're going to take off. This is the original price. And this way works. However, if I am in a store, do I normally have a piece of paper and a pencil? Okay. I, you would, would you like to see it a little faster way? How much of the cost is this right here? Someone said, did someone say all of it? What does that mean? And percentage wise, how much is that? This is 100%, correct? What am I doing? You're taking 25% off, which means you are only going to be paying 75% is all you should be paying of the total cost. Are you with me? So what would be a faster way to do this that would give you the same answer? Yes. That's all you have to do, guys. It doesn't take that long. And you can double check to make sure that you are actually paying the correct price. Because I'm telling you right now, companies put signs up. There's a person who is supposed to be taking that sign down. They forget to take that sign down. And you as the customer have the right to that sale and the other sales. So when they go to do it in the computer, guess what? The computer's going to come up with the actual correct price. But since there's a sign up that says you should also get an additional 25, you have the right to get that 25% off. They can't leave a sign up and not honor it. That has happened multiple times at Kohl's, where my wife and I have been shopping. We've seen something that's supposed to be, you know, only 50% off, and they had a little take an additional 25% off and that was supposed to be last week's sales, and they left it up, guess what? The computer rings it up, and I go, nope, that's supposed to be another 25% off. It should be this price. I go back. I take a picture of the, the sign on the rack. I bring it up to them, and they're like, oh, yep, you're right. And they have to honor it. But no one's going to check that except for me. That happens big time when you are buying clothes. That people, because they... Goodness gracious, going to JC Penney's or any of those Macy's or anything like that? You guys shop there ever? Look around? American Eagle? When you look around, what do you see? All kinds of signs. Buy one, get one. Half off. 25% off. Sales racks. 50%. Right? You see signs everywhere. There, there, there's, that's going to be something that you guys are going to come in contact with. 
All you have to do, take your phone out. We're going to show you how easy this is. Take your phone out. For those of you who have an iPhone, swipe up. For those of you who don't, get to your calculator. And all you're going to hit quickly in the store is you're going to hit 0 0.75. And you're going to hit times 249.95. Hit equals and you should get what? 187. Before you even go up to the computer, you already have an idea of what that set of tires should cost you. Now, we understand that there is tax and that kind of stuff, but it better be around that number. And first, before they put the tax on, you should see the actual tire set price. Then they should have the tax, then they should have the total price. But you should be able to see all of those. Does that make sense? Now, how do I know this makes sense? I want to teach you something called number sense, and this is stuff I use all the time. Because I do make mistakes, you will mistake, make mistakes. How can I look at this and go, that number seems about right? Well, what's the percent that I can calculate like that? Really quick, hopefully you can do this. 50%, right? If I said, I'm going to give you a discount right now, but you have to figure out the discount in your head, what is the discount that almost all of us would use? 50% off. Why? Because I can calculate that really quick. What if I would have came up with a number like 96 over here? How could I prove to myself that, that, that that's way wrong? If I would just go with 50%, and what would 50% discount of this be? Well, can we round that up real quick? Because when we're doing this, I'm just getting a ballpark, right? So I would call this 250 in my head, right? And I would say 50% off of that would then be 125. Does this number make sense because of that? Yes, it does. Do you see how I can, can do that to help myself out and go, yep. I will tell you that there are tests that have been turned in where I've had like 10 plus 5. And it gives me like 50. And you're going, that doesn't even make sense. What did the person accidentally do? And multiply. Does that happen? Especially with our calculators. We get fat fingers. We hit an extra number in there. Um, 2.5 times something turns sometimes into 25 because when you go to hit the decimal point, you don't hit the decimal point, and then the kid gets this, you know, massive number, and they put that answer on the test, and you're going 2.5 times 10 was 250. Really? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no number sense because as soon as you guys put something in a calculator, calculator's like you're, oh, like, no, it can't be wrong. Yes, it can because you can put it in wrong. If you use number sense, it will help you out. You guys with me on this? All right. Now they do the they do the longer way. I'm not here to do all that kind of. I want to make sure we know how to do this the, the efficient way. When we're going to be in a store, how can we do this quickly? All right? Someone else read this one for me. Tori, thank you so much for volunteering. I appreciate that. important things in this uh, question up here. What's some of the things that I need to highlight? Yeah. So we got two of them. Okay. What else is important? I think that's important. I want my 20%. I don't like working. Well, $10. What else is important about that? And, and it's not discounted. Okay. I think that's about it, right? I think those those couple things will help us get through. Anything else that we need? All right, so talk me through this. How would I figure out... Uh, what, do, what do we think 10 is going to be? Shipping cost, but use a math term that we've done in this section that describes what 10 is. 
something that we did, those vocab words from last week. Okay, it can be described as a term, but even more, even more descriptive than just a term. It's a constant because this term does not change. How much is your shipping? Ten dollars. Is there any variable that's going to be attached to it? Is it ten dollars per item? If it, if they had said that, would that be a constant anymore? No, because the shipping would change depending on how many items that she bought, right? But when I say it's ten dollars, that's going to be a constant. Okay, so let's go ahead. How do we figure out, let's pretend just for one minute, she's only buying one LED. How do we just learn to figure out the cost of the LED? How much percent off is she getting? She's getting 20%, you with me? How much does that mean she's actually paying, Josh? What percent is she paying if she's getting 20% off? She's paying 80%, you guys with me? So what are we going to do to the cost of the light bulb? Multiply it by what? Point eight. You don't you need the zero at the end. We're just pointing. You guys with me on this? Everybody understands where that's coming from. I need some nodding or I'm with you. Yes, Mr. Martin, I got gotcha. you. All right, so we got point eight. So point eight times what? Not yet. We're not worried about our bunch of two of them. Point 0.8 times what? We'll, we'll just describe what it is that we'd multiply it by. Don't worry about the two yet. We're just doing her buying one light bulb. Okay, why did you write L or one L? Just, she's saying it's point 0.8 times the cost of the light. So in this example, I know later on they use X, so we're just going to use X. And you could use L, you could use B, you could use any variable, right? We understand that this X represents whatever the cost of the light bulbs are going to be. That's what I'm going to multiply by 0.8. Are you guys with me? Now, the only problem is in this question, she's not buying one of them. She's buying how many of them? So whatever this cost is right here, what do I have to do to it? Double it. What does it mean to double it? Multiply it by, and I'm going to put the little 2 right here. And there's a reason I'm doing that. we got to talk about something. Then what else does she have to factor in? What is the last thing she has to pay for? And so I need to put a plus 10, which hopefully you see that constant. Does that make sense on where, she's, where she can calculate this? Now, since we know she's buying two light bulbs and they're at 80 percent off or they're, she's going to pay 80 percent of them sorry i wish they were 80 percent off i'd go buy some my aunt it doesn't matter what it is if it's like over 50 percent she buys it that is not a good shopper she will literally come home and she's like look what i got and you what in the world you bought a tractor it was 75% off. You wouldn't believe the deal I got. You're never, like, she has so many new things that she's never used in her house. It's stupid. So don't be one of those buyers, like, just because it's a good deal. It, you need to need it before you should buy it. She's terrible. And she also, but she has the sweetest heart. She will buy for everybody. But she'll think that you need something and you don't need it, but you have to act like you need it. Because you don't want to hurt her feelings. I bought you this horseshoe set. Thank you. I was looking for one of those. She's never going to stop. No, she doesn't. And my poor uncle, he's going to have to work till the day he dies. Just because of her shopping habit. And I wish I was joking with you guys. You could ask Miss Mark about Tammy. She would tell you she buys everything. She would be like, I mean, she goes garage sailing. Oh, here, here you go. She bought a giant Mickey Mouse. Giant, like this tall. He sits in her rocking chair. Guess how much I got him for? Guess how much? I don't know. I don't care. It's a stuffed animal. Five dollars. Five dollars I got that. Can you believe that? And, and then, you, like, I 
So what are you going to do with that? I don't know. He's going to sit there. Oh, okay. He looks good. Do you know how much he's worth, though? Nope. $75. Okay. Yes. Your grandma? Yeah, but she sells it. Hey, I can understand that. That's She's making money. My hands, Mickey Mouse, is sitting collecting dust. And I'm actually taking my seat because when you go over there to eat, you got to throw this stupid thing on the ground. And then she's like, don't do that to Mickey. And you're like, what? It's the purpose of this thing. You need to give her some tough love. Next time I'm going to sit down and just put Mickey's arms around me. I know. That's the point. All right, so let's finish this off. What can we do here? What can we do? What's something we're supposed to do with equations? We're supposed to try to simplify everything that we can, right? Is there anything? Can I do anything with this right here? No. Is there anything, something, is there something I can do? Okay. Don't say distribute. That's why I wrote it the way I wrote it. Because we distribute when you have this. Because I am actually going against the laws of math. This is a trick where you get to go against the laws of math. What is supposed to happen before I multiply by this point 2? I'm supposed to do what with these two? Add them. That's why the parentheses are saying, nope, you have to do this addition. Because normally what do you do first? Multiplication and division is before addition and subtraction, correct? Isn't the point 2 multiplying? This point 2, isn't it multiplying? How am I doing the addition first then? Because what is there that's making the addition more important? The parentheses. So you must do this addition, then you can do your multiplication. Are you with me? What is the point 8 doing to the x? Multiplying. What is the point 2 doing, or the, I'm sorry, the 2, this doesn't need to be one. This 2, what is it doing to here? Is this more important than this? No, they're both what? What do we know about multiplication? You can change the order of it. So what can I do with these parentheses actually? I can actually drop these parentheses. I don't have to do those first because it's multiplication and multiplication. And I do not distribute the 2. I don't multiply the 2 times the point 8 and the x. No, you multiply it by one of them. Just like if I was doing 2 times 3 times 6. Are you following me? Do I do 2 times 3 and 2 times 6? No, what do I do? 2 times 3, which is 6, times 6, which is 36, right? That's how I get to that answer. Same thing's going to be here. You're doing 2 times point 8 times x. I just don't know what this number is right right now. You following me? So what is 2 times 0.8 going to give me? What's it going to be? 1.6. Remember how you multiply our decimals. Um, you multiply decimals by going like this. You pretend like decimals not there for a minute. 6 times 2 is 12. Bring that 1 up. Times 2. What did I do? Oh, that's what I did. Point 0.8 times 2. Pretend like the decimal is not there. Okay? 8 times 2 is what? 16. How many numbers were behind the decimal up here? 1. So there's only 1 that's going to be behind the decimal down there. Give you another example real quick. I was doing 1.5 times 2.3. Old school multiplication. Pretend like the decimals are what? They're not there. Do not worry about the decimals at the beginning. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry that 1. 3, 4. You with me? Placeholder 0. Moving over. 2 times... 5 is 10. There's another 0. Carry that 1. 
2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Now I add all this stuff up. 5, 4, 3. Have I worried about any decimals so far? Okay. Now, how many decimals are up here behind the decimal point? 1. How many are behind the decimal point here? So how many are there together behind the decimal point? So guess how many numbers are going to be behind my decimal point here? And so I go, I start here and I go 1, 2, my answer is 3.45. For those of you who have can't kind of remember how to multiply, it's not that difficult. Multiply just like regular, just remember the decimals at the end. How do we think? Good so far? All right. So that's going to be our answer is going to be 1.6. What is still back here behind this? X plus 10. Now they're going to get a different way, but at the end, the answer is going to be the same. They're going to do the way where they're going to do the price of the bulbs minus the discounted price. Kind of the way that we set it up in the beginning. And I said that just takes longer and we should just do the quicker way. You follow me? Watch what they get down here, though. Um, in the end, they get the same thing. Ours is just a much faster way of getting it. What do we think? Good so far? Someone give me an example of a term from this one right here. Just real quick. How many are there terms? Just call it out. We should be able to call this out together. How many terms? How many terms? Two. That's how it should sound when I do this. What separates terms? Addition and... So this is one, and this is the other term. One, two, right? What is one of the terms? Someone name one of the terms. 1.6x. What is the other term? 10. What is 10 also called? A constant. What is 1.6 also called? 1.6 is not a variable, but it is with a variable. So what do we call that? We call it the coefficient. Okay? The coefficient. Questions on that? Good so far? All right, let's go to the practice. So for number one, it says simplify each expression if possible, and then list the terms of simplified expressions. Identify constant terms and the factors and coefficients of non-constant uh, terms. Um, so here we go. Number one, we're going to kind of talk number one through, and then you're going to do number two. These are the um, these are very similar to your test questions. This is like something that I could put up on the test. Number one, are there any things that I need to combine? Are there any, what are those things that we'd be looking for? Are there any like terms up here? No. We have an A to the third. We have an A. Are A to the third and A the same? So we're not going to combine those, right? Um, can someone give me an example? Uh, first, how many terms are there? As a class, how many are there? Three. Can someone give me an example of a term? 12a to the third. You can just call it out loud. I don't care. What's the next term right next to it? 16a. What's the last term? And what do we call 4? And what is 12? We good. Number 2. Is there anything I can simplify? Yes. What can be simplified? The what? The x squared terms can be combined, right? How many do I have in the beginning? 21. How many do I have in the second one? What's really important that you say that you have? Not just 15 of them. You have what? You have negative. Negative 15 of them. Because when I go to combine these two, this 21, I'm going to be taking away 15. The sign that's in front of it has to stay with it. You guys following me? So 
So when I go to combine these, how many x squareds am I going to have? Six x squareds. You call it six x squared plus three x plus nine. You might want to be writing these examples down because, like I said, you can use notes on the test, but if you got nothing, don't ask me questions. Six x squared. You can combine these two, and this becomes six x squared plus three x plus nine. Now, the one thing you have to remember is this was a negative fifteen x squared. When you move that to be closer to this, when you're saying, "Hey, you can combine these," you got to remember that negative is with is part of it. Now, how would that have changed if I had made this a negative twenty one x? Squared. It would be a negative 36x squared. Because what happens when you have a negative and you have a negative and you're combining them? You get more negatives. And so to get more negatives, you actually have to add those two numbers, the 21 and the 15, and keep it negative. Because doesn't that make sense in real life? If you borrow $10 from someone and you borrow five more, you add those two and say 15 and owe, right? You still owe them 15. You don't go, hey, I borrowed $10 and I borrowed five. I only owe you five now. If you do math like that, please see me after class. I got some money I'd like to borrow. Okay. That's, not the, that's not how this works. All right? So number three. Number three is, is pretty tricky. So let's talk about uh, the way that we should read these math problems. It says half of the what? So what am I actually taking half of? I'm taking half of an addition. So before I can take the half, I have to do the what first. What's the only way that I can do addition before I'm supposed to do multiplication? What will I have to use? Parentheses will have to be used in this. Does that make sense on how you learn, know that you're going to have to have some parentheses? Because it's half of the sum. Now, you can change this really, like the, the part that sucks about math, you change the order of this wording, and it changes the problem completely. Like, what if I had said um, the sum of half of x and y? Does that change the, the problem? Yes. So we'll talk about those two examples here, and I'll show you the difference between them. Are you with me? Okay. So first off, I'm going to be taking half, but I'm not going to write the half. I'm actually going to write the what first. I'm going to write the sum first. What's the sum that I need to do together? So I'm going to do, you know what? I need the sum first, and what am I going to do with that? Once I add those together, what's the next thing I'm going to do to it? Take half of it, and I'm actually going to write it as like this. Is this the same thing? Is that the same thing? It is. These two are the same. I'm going to write it like this because we're actually going to do something with that half. So these are technically the same, but I would write it like this for our purposes. Because after it says, what am I going to do? You're going to decrease it by... One third y. Is everybody with me on this so far? Now, what do I have to do with that one half? Actually, give me one second. Do you remember that the wording I switched around? I said, what if you had? Um, I said the you had half of x. Oh, no, no, yeah, I don't know what it was. You're right. It was the sum of half x and y. And so what would that look like? That would be half of x plus y. Do you see how different those two look? Okay. It's the wording, huh? It's because it says half, it says the sum of half of x. Yeah, so the, the half 
of x goes only with this. And it's saying the sum of when you have you, this, when you see sum of, you're going to have two things you're looking for. And this, what's going to separate them is the and, right? Right here it says sum of x and y, right? So sum of, this is the first thing, and this is the second thing that you're going to be adding. So I had to take half of x. Where in this case, it says half, half of what? Well, you have to do the sum first, right? It's half of the sum. And what's the sum of? X and Y. So you add those two together, then take the half of it. That's, again, some of the parts of math that kind of tricky. I use the same exact words. Gosh, I just changed the order of it. And, and we changed the problem completely. With me. What's now, what do I have to do with that one half? That we, you guys tried to use this word last time and it was wrong. This time it is okay. You do distribute this half because what is inside the parentheses? Addition. And our addition and uh, multiplication the same power. So now I've got powers that are unequal, so I have to distribute. Remember when powers were equal, what could I just do with the parentheses? Like what if I have this? X plus 5 plus 2. Or let's do this. Switch these. This will pop out. Do I have to do 5 plus x first? What is in between here? What's out here? Are they the same power? Look at these stupid parentheses. They don't really matter because they're not having, they're not making a different one jump it. I'm right here. I'm making addition come before multiplication. That's huge. That normally doesn't happen. Here it's addition over addition. It doesn't matter which one you do first. Are you following me? So what do I have to do? We said we have to distribute. And I end up with half of x plus half of y minus one third. Now what do you notice that we have? What are these guys called? First off, how many terms do we have up there? Right now we have three. But we have two that are what? Two that are like terms. Y and Y are like terms. Now, can I just combine their fractions the way they are? No. And I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit. This will be the last thing we get to today. This, I know this sounds really stupid, but it really makes sense hopefully for you. This person has half of a pizza. This person wants to subtract a third of a pizza. Shut up, I'm not an artist. Yeah. Eat that. Because it's pizza. Alright. So, I take half. And I just was talking to you and we're like, hey listen, let's just trade pieces. Would you trade this piece for this piece? Why? You'd be like, no. My piece is bigger. Right? So that's not that's not an even trade. So what do we do to the pizzas? We recut them so that they have the same amount of cuts, so that each piece is the same size. Don't pack up yet. That's rude. I will let you know. I got till 45. Yeah, I got two minutes. I use all my time. So what do I do here? Is I say. What can I cut this in that this can also be cut in the same amount and it, it doesn't change? They both can change into that number really easily. Six. So I recut this. So it's in six slices. What am I going to recut this into? So that it has this, this size of this piece is the same as all these pieces down here. So they're cut evenly. Does that make sense? The way that we do that is we go, hey, one half and one third. Their common denominator you said was six, right? What did you multiply two by to get to that? Three. But if you multiply the bottom by it, what do you have to multiply the top by? Why? What am I really multiplying the one half by? What number is this? It's one. You do not multiply by three. If you multiply by three, you change the number. I'm not allowed to change how much pizza I have. I'm just changing the way that it 
Look, do you remember me saying we change the way things look all the time? That's why you must multiply the bottom and the top by the same number because it's really the number 1, which won't change its value. So you really have 3 sixths of a pizza over here, and you're going to subtract 2 sixths of a pizza, and you will realize that you have 1 sixth left over. Does that make sense on how we do with fractions and why we cut them the way they are? Yes? All right. Please don't pack up early. Yes? Right here? Yeah. Because I had to multiply. If I multiply, so I go, what's their common number? They both go into 6. So I multiply this by 3. But if you multiply the bottom by 3, you have to multiply it on top. So same right here. What did I multiply the bottom by? So what did I have to multiply the top by? Yes. Okay.